You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Hi, I'm Jay Farner, CEO of Quicken Loans, America's largest mortgage lender. Spring will be here soon. So if buying a new home is on your to-do list, right now is the time to call Quicken Loans. Learn about which mortgage options make sense for you and get a jump on your competition. With our exclusive rate shield approval, the low rate you lock today is protected for up to 90 days while you shop for your new home. With a rate shield approval, if rates go up, your low rate stays locked. But if rates go down, you get that new, even lower rate. Either way, you win. Talk to us today at 800-QUICKEN or go to rocketmortgage.com to take advantage. Here's another great reason to work with us. For a record nine years in a row, J.D. Power has ranked Quicken Loans highest in the nation in customer satisfaction for primary mortgage origination. Again, to lock in today's low mortgage interest rate and get the security of our exclusive rate shield approval, call us today at 800-QUICKEN or go to rocketmortgage.com. For J.D. Power award information, visit jdpower.com. Rate shield approval only valid on certain 30-year fixed rate loans. Call for cost information and conditions. Equal housing lender. License in all 50 states. NMLS number 3030. Hi, welcome to this Subway ad for the new Sesame Ginger Glaze Chicken Signature Wrap. How would you like it? I'll take a... Sports announcer at home? Yeah, how'd you... We just know. My wife picks up the new signature wrap. It's got double the rotisserie style chicken mixed with a sesame ginger glaze. She appears annoyed at me, but she shrugs it off. Those sweet and savory flavors are calling her name. She lifts the wrap and she takes the bite. Incredible. And now she's closing the door on my subway. Make it what you want. Limited time only at participating restaurants. Double meat based on average six inch sub. I'm little teapot, short and stout. Here is my handle and here is my spell. No, that like this. When I get all steamed up, then I shout, tip me over and pour me out. (laughs) This is WWE superstar Roman Reigns. It only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. Visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. It's the refreshingly non-political podcast about everything else. I'm Alan Ray. And I do this for free. For millions of years, mankind lived just like the animals. Then something happened which unleashed the power of our imagination. We weren't the talk. It is the refreshingly 
non-political podcast about everything else. I am your humble host, Alan Ray, and I do this for free on KLRN Radio, America's podcast network. It's Politics Free Friday Night continuing. You just heard Chick Chat. You just heard In the Crease. After I do this for free, you get juxtaposition. Blow your TV set up. Just hang with us. What more could you want in life? I mean, we go over the important things here. This is the stuff you really need to live your life with. Things like Taylor Swift has come out with a brand new album. I I missed it. I missed it. Did she have another breakup? I I didn't even know she was having another relationship. She usually doesn't come out with an album until she screws somebody's life up. And and then she does a bunch of vengeance songs and, and then she comes out with an album. You know, rinse and repeat. Did, did, uh, maybe this is the album that she's come out with where she finally writes her banner song, Maybe It's Me. <laughs> I doubt it. I doubt it. Uh, so so she's got another album out. W- what could possibly be the, the influence behind it? Oh, oh, maybe it's this. Maybe it's this from People.com. Katy Perry reveals why she reconnected with Taylor Swift. I've always wanted to be, I uh, wanted what's best for her. Really, I, I, I didn't know any of this. How relevant? Where else are you going to get stuff this relevant anywhere? Except for, I do this for free. Let's see, uh, the album, or this article says, Katy Perry is revealing new details about why she and Taylor Swift finally decided to bury the hatchet. Where did they bury that hatchet? That's what I want to know. Oh, anyways, uh, in a candid interview on the Howard Stern show Tuesday, Perry explained that she and Swift wanted to put publicly their differences aside and set an example for their younger fans. Gossip in life can take the elevator, but the truth takes the stairs. It just takes time, Perry said, noting that their feud was largely overblown by the media at the time. What I'm so grateful for is we did get to make up publicly and got to be an example of redemption for young girls, she told Stern. Aww, isn't that sweet? (sighs) Life is just back to normal again, folks. I, I just... This is it. We're we're done. We're not everything's good again. Nothing else matters but Katy Perry and Taylor Swift are friends again. They're buddies. How long this will last? Who knows? <laughs> and who cares? I'm Alan Ray. It's a refreshingly non-political podcast about everything else. Let's get this going. The parental advisory sticker turns 30 years old today. Has it been that long? Oh my gosh, D. Snyder, you are old. Uh, <laughs> man, does anybody besides me know? I'm going to give you guys a few seconds. And I know chat, I know this is pre recorded, but I know chat's all in there. What was the first album that? came out that had the parental advisory sticker on it. Do you know? I'll give you five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. It was two live crew banned in the USA. Yes, sir. We all watched. I, I think, I think that's when a lot of teenagers of that era 30 years ago, got into politics as they sat there and watched their heroes. They watched Frank Zappa. They watched D Snyder, et cetera, et cetera. And one of the, one of the most surprising people that went before Congress and, and called this what it is, um, was John Denver. And we all sat there and went, John Denver, the, the, the fat-faced, little, all-American, good old boy that everybody loved and adored, who sang all of these syrupy, milky, 
Uh, songs. Oh my gosh. My sister had, uh, both my sisters had all the John Denver albums. Ah, sorry. <laughs> and he got up before Congress and just laid them out. They thought surely, surely the all American boy, John Denver would be against this sticker. And he came out and just blew them up. Says it is not your place for censorship. Now, I, I, I'm not going to get political here, but I'm just saying I think that's what drew a lot of kids my age into politics was watching this. Did it work? No, no, it didn't work. It was just more proof that the government can screw up a one-man parade. Um, and, and whether you agree with it or not, you know, the older I get, um, the, the more that I realize that it was a magnet a magnet. Kids are going to get into what kids are going to get into. You can guide them morally. You can guide them ethically. You can beg and plead with them. Teach them your ways. Uh, if you catch them with something that you don't approve of, don't like, explain to them why you don't like it, approve of it. You can lay down the law that's not allowed in your house. <sighs> But they're going to do what they're going to do. You can you you have to let them go at some point. And I, I whether you agree with the bad stuff or not, the bad stuff is out there. The bad stuff's going to happen. It's been going on for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. The first time somebody decided, hey, let's paint a nude portrait. Uh, it's when it started. Immorality is just a fact of life. But I'm not going to get political on it. I'm not going to get preachy on it. And I'm just going to say it's been 30 years ago since that sticker debuted. How did it work for you? <laughs> oh, my gosh, I'm old. I'm Alan Ray. So glad you're going to spend the next hour with me. It, it just nothing is working right. I haven't done one of these shows, I don't know, over a month. It just seemed like I was going to do it a uh, week before last. I had company over. We were having a great time. And I'm like, I am just totally unprepared. The time before that, I don't even remember why, but I couldn't do it. There was something going on. I almost couldn't do today's show because, um, well, my, my wonderful computer is downloading the massive, horribly massive Windows 10 update. I'm watching it. I'm watching it while I'm doing this show. It's been going for, I don't know, an hour now, and it says uh, working on updates 30%. Don't turn off your PC. Folks, this scares me. I'm afraid. I, I, I'm I'm worried. What's this going to be like on the other side? You know, it just kept bothering me and bothering me. It's like, you know what? <sighs> Windows 10 can't be any worse than what it was before. Let's just press the shiny red button and see what happens. What's the worst thing that could go on? Are they going to send me back to Windows 7? <laughs> they might. You never know. What are we looking at today? There's a whole lot of non-political fun stuff, like Airbus signs a contract with UK Ministry of Defense for Skynet 6A satellite. This is according to eijournal.com. Airbus Defense and Space has signed a contract with the UK Ministry of Defense to extend and enhance the Skynet fleet. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Hold on. Skynet? That They didn't watch the movies? They did they didn't see Terminator 1 through a gazillion where, you know, what takes over the world? Skynet? <laughs> really? What is wrong with these people? Why are they doing things like this? It's almost like they're, they're, they're mocking fate, saying, ha, we're going to name it Skynet. What are you going to do, take over the planet? Yeah, it's starting to worry me, folks. It really is starting to worry me. The people who are in charge of weird things are are starting to do things that kind of are freaking me out. Take, for instance, uh, somebody overseas was trying to save a species of fish, but instead they created a whole new fish that's part sturgeon and part paddlefish in all accident. A group of Hungarian aquatic scientists was looking for ways to uh, to save one of the fishes. It's one of the one of the most exquisite caviar fish, uh, and they're trying to save it from extinction. Instead, they made a Frankenfish. 
But their accidental hybrid, a fish that's part American paddlefish and part Russian sturgeon, could benefit fish farming and the industry's carbon footprint. And on their own, the fish are a marvel of biology. Uh, though they haven't been formally named yet, the fellow fishery researchers have given them the moniker Sturtlefish. Oh, isn't that cute? A sturgeon and a paddlefish. It got a Sturtlefish. Um, these things are ugly. Okay, I'm not even going to lie to you. They're ugly. They, they shouldn't have done it. This is from CNN.com. Uh, the initial goal of the study was to encourage the critically endangered sturgeon to reproduce asexually. That isn't quite how it went. The Russian sturgeon instead hybridized with the American paddlefish, the first time the two have ever hybridized successfully in captivity. The paddlefish was originally meant to provide sperm, not its DNA, to help the sturgeon reproduce on its own. The sturgeon isn't so genetically different from the paddlefish. They're both kind of ugly. I've caught a sturgeon. Sturgeon are all over the upper part of Michigan and up in the UP. And when you catch one, you go, ew, what's this? Anyways, um... Previous hybridization attempts between American paddlefish and other sturgeons hadn't worked. And for their evolutionary similarities, the two have vastly different feeding habits, preferred habitats, and physical characteristics. Plus, the two fish would never have met naturally. The American paddlefish dwells in the middle Mississippi River Basin, and the Russian sturgeon inhabits Russian rivers. The Russian sturgeon is considered extremely valuable for its roe, or its eggs, both species are threatened by shrinking habitats and overfishing. While the caviar that comes from the sturgeons is a delicacy, the fish themselves are exceedingly rare in Russian waters. That's why the researchers from Hungary wanted to encourage the sturgeon to reproduce through uh, gynogenesis, which basically is, uh, you know, I don't know, you, 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 you do the whole, uh, what is it? it? You know, life finds a way. <laughs> It's scary. Why are they doing this? What happens if these new sturtlefish end up being 15 feet long and, and eat people? Stop messing with things like this, scientists. Stop it. it, it it's not good. Uh, now, to their, uh, to their basic uh, credit, they're keeping them captive. They're not letting them out in the, in the wild. But what happens if they get there? What happens if somebody lets a bunch of them loose? I mean, what's going to happen out in the wild? Sturgeon get really, really big. Paddlefish probably do too. What, what if we end up with like these monsters floating around rivers eating people? See, Skynet, genetically bioengineered fish, stop screwing around with things like this. So is Alex Jones right about Skynet? You know, he, he's he gone on for years about how there's a Skynet, and, and, and now he's right. 2020 is a very bizarre year. I'm not even going to lie to you. There's things going on. It's just like the, the, the stuff isn't right. It's just not. What else we got here? Hurricane Douglas. Hurricane Douglas. You know, I don't remember I, I, maybe it's just I've never paid attention to it, but I don't remember a hurricane beating feet towards Hawaii. It, I'm sure they have. I'm sure this can't be the first. But uh, Douglas is expected to be near hurricane intensity as it approaches the Hawaiian Islands on Sunday. It says it's fairly common for hurricanes to track towards Hawaii, but they usually dissipate or at least weaken considerably before impacting the islands. Ah, so I'm not wrong. See, I was paying attention. For example, both Lane and Olivia impacted Hawaii in 2018. Also in 2016, both Lester and Madeline threatened Hawaii, but they usually dissipate and just turn into really bad storms by the time they get there. This one might just hit full on Hawaii. And I'm looking at the track. It looks like it's going to downgrade a little bit before it hits Hawaii. But if for some weird reason you're crashed out on a beach, in Hawaii on a Friday night, listening to KLR and Radio, America's podcast network, laughing along with us and having a good time. Uh, be careful out there. You, you got like a day and a half and it's going to be hitting you. Not good. Not good at all. But yeah, it's just, this is part of 2020. You know, we're going to have giant genetically engineered fish eating us when we go into the rivers where we got Skynet. Skynet's going to come to life pretty soon here. Start blowing us all up. 
the FDA. I knew this is going to fall under. I knew this was going to happen. I knew it. I knew it from day one. The FDA expands hand sanitizer. that I can't speak. Hand sanitizer recalls to at least seventy five brands across the U.S. The Food and Drug Administration has expanded the list of hand sanitizers, some sold at Walmart, Costco, and other national chains, being recalled to at least seventy five Wednesday, saying toxic levels of wood alcohol in them can cause injury or death. The FDA said that there has been an increase in hand sanitizers that are labeled to contain ethyl alcohol or ethanol, but have tested positive for methanol or wood alcohol. If methanol is absorbed through the skin, it can cause blindness and hospitalization or death if ingested. Since the start of COVID-19 pandemic, health officials have continuously urged Americans to wash their hands for 20 seconds. Yeah, we know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and use hand sanitizer to protect against exposure to SARS-CoV-2, the coronavirus that causes respiratory disease. The demand for hand sanitizers has surged and questionable new brands have made their way to store shelves across the United States, most imported from Mexico. Unfortunately, there are some companies taking advantage of the increased usage of hand sanitizer during the coronavirus pandemic and putting lives at risk by selling products with dangerous and unacceptable ingredients. This is already starting to have an effect. There's like six people who have been injured, blinded, through this stuff. <sighs> you, you, you've seen it coming. You have to have seen this coming. I mean, you, you, you can't all of a sudden, and, and, and I am going to go out on a limb and predict we haven't seen the end of some of these recalls. Uh, I think some of the recalls are going to include masks that are made with products that you might breathe in and cause cancer. I think we're going to see um, more of these hand sanitizers because let's face it, uh, we did the whole World War II thing and a lot of these micro breweries you've seen all of a sudden switched from making homemade beers and wines and stuff and they flicked the switch and they started making hand sanitizers. Okay, a lot of them, a lot of them did it with all pure intentions and there they did it you know with the natural ingredients they followed fda guides and that's great that's great we did what needed to be done and then they're to be lauded for it commended for it there's always these idiots out there that just say well let's just throw any old thing in there and and call it hand sanitizer and send it out and people will buy it and we'll make money off of it well, I just don't think we've seen the end of some of these recalls, these masks and some of these soaps and some of these, uh, you know, there's there's been things out there that have been trying to take advantage of good old-fashioned Clorox wipes. And I, and I think we're going to find out that some of these things are just really unhealthy for you and there's going to be some fallout. It just seems like all kinds of weird stuff's going on right now. And I started picking up on something a while back. I I didn't know if this was going to be good or bad or what, but all of a sudden you see signs that say credit card only. You see things out there that says, you know, uh, we round up in businesses. Well, what does that mean? Well, they, and, and I thought maybe it was local at first. Apparently, there is a massive coin shortage going on in the United States. Um, the Federal Reserve has come out and say they are working on a, on a way to reverse a national coin shortage. Um, and, and it started happening during this coronavirus pandemic. Retailers like Walmart and Kroger are asking customers to either use exact change or pay with credit cards as banks struggle to locate spare coins. So if you're like me, if you're like me and you're sitting on bottles, you know, cans of spare coins, may be good for you and maybe the entire United States to take those to the bank and, and put them in your savings account. Today might be that rainy day and it might not be exactly what you've been uh, thinking of, but it might be one of those days where, you know, Maybe we need to start throwing some money back into it because this is what happened. And I've read up on this. I started going down a rabbit hole and looking at some of these things. And apparently because we shut down the entire globe, 
um, one of the fallouts from it is money, hard money quit moving around. And think this through with me. It, it makes perfect sense. If everybody's locked in their home, if, if very few, if any, if no people are going out, the money isn't traveling around. I'm not going into, you know, Burger King or McDonald's or something like that and giving them a $5 bill or $4 and, you know, a quarter or something like that for whatever my order is. Um, most people have been shopping with credit cards online, even grocery stores. And I want to talk about this for a minute until we get to the half hour, half waypoint. Even grocery stores were at the point where, and they're still doing this, where you can bring up their wares online. You can order, pay with a credit card, drive up to their door, and they'll bring stuff out to you. Restaurants in this area and probably you know most of other areas – um, one of the ones that a good friend of my wife's runs, you called them up, you gave them your credit card number, they ran everything through, they said, you know, this is what color of car uh, I'm going to drive, and they said, okay, we'll watch for it. They would come out to your car, give you your order, and you drove off. Now, think that through with me. If everybody's doing that, if everybody's doing that, the hard cash is not moving. Coins are not moving. Um, dollar bills, $5 bills, none of that is moving around. That stuff has to move. That stuff has to. I mean, people are sitting on it because they're not spending a lot of money right now. A lot of people aren't even employed, so they can't spend the money right now. So that stuff is just sitting in people's pockets in people's houses uh, under your sofa uh, in the cushions of your car and whatever and not moving and as a result of everything that's going on right now social distancing safety measures uh shopping distance online doing all stuff we've created a coin shortage now that being said let's rant a little bit and i'm i'm not going to Single anybody out, any business or anything out. A lot of these businesses are saying, you know, if you pay with cash, you know, we round up. Really? Really? So if my order comes out to $8.05, you want to charge me $9? I don't think so, buddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, and, and I haven't been asked this yet, but I think my reply would be, well, if it's over the 50 cent mark, go ahead and round up. If it's under, round down. Why should I have to take a hit because you don't have cash? There's going to be some legalities going on here pretty soon. I mean, there's just so much fallout from shutting down the entire globe from this pandemic that people aren't thinking of. One of them is, you know, money has, there's something right on bills that says, a note especially, that this is legal tender. Legal tender that is intended for all debts and purposes. In other words, there's been some a lot of legal battles fought over, you know, you have to accept money. You have to accept cash because that's what it says on there. This is, this is good for any debt. So you have to. So there's probably going to be some legal fallout from this. Now, yeah, there are some, some tin hat brigades out there saying that this is an attempt to get rid of money. Maybe. I don't know. I, I know that there's been a lot of movements where people have wanted to go to a cashless society. I do not agree with those movements. I do not agree. Now, I'm a little bit of a hypocrite. I'm not even going to lie about it, okay? I'm a hypocrite in the fact that I hardly ever carry cash on my person. I mean, very, very, very rarely do I ever have cash, but that being said, transactions between people, human to human transactions, transactions between you and a business, transactions that really is nobody else's business but yours, don't need to be tracked. What you give to charities, to your church, what you do with your income is your business. And quite honestly, a cashless society can be tracked, marked. Every move you make 
can be tracked, can be marked. And at the risk of sounding tinfoil hat myself, that might not be used against you by normal circumstances, but always look 10 to 20 years into the future. Always. When you're talking about stuff like this. If, if somebody with bad intent, bad purposes, wants to track every single thing you do for nefarious intents and purposes. And remember, and I'm not just talking about government, I'm talking about hackers. I'm talking about anything, anybody. And and all you have is a debit card, a credit card. That's all you can pay with. These hackers or these government types or anybody else can follow your every spending habit, your every move. You may not want them to know your every move. There's this thing called privacy. See how that works? So if you're sitting on a tank full of coins like I am, which I'm I'm looking at one right now, and I'm thinking to myself, maybe I ought to jot on down to the bank in the morning and turn all these in and deposit it in my account and just have the money and do my part to get the change rolling again. Cause really honestly, I want the hard stuff. I want the cash, the coins and everything. I want that stuff rolling again. You should too. I'm Alan Ray. Gosh, we've already reached the halfway point. This thing flies. Where does the time go? Did I fall into a time machine? What's going on here? Don't go away. Well, wait a minute. Let me, let me back up a step. Go get you a refreshed drink. Go get you a snack. Meet me back here in a few minutes. We got to go through, pay some bills. Don't do anything that I would do. I'll be back. Listen now and don't forget if you go for that solid jive, you can always keep the dream alive. Palin, palin, palin with that. My son was in the Army back during Desert Storm, but even then he wanted an MBA. He looked at a dozen schools, but only one offered the online education and flexibility he needed while he was in a tent in Iraq, Grantham University. Turns out that Grantham's been delivering affordable, relevant college and advanced degrees for over 65 years. Heck, if they can deliver a quality education to a soldier in a tent overseas, Think about the flexibility Grantham can offer you so you can earn your degree, too. It doesn't matter how complicated or full your life is. If getting a degree is on your bucket list, you'll want to do what my son did. You'll want to call Grantham. Find out how easy it is to get started on your education so you can check that college degree off your bucket list. Call Grantham right now. 800-910-1370. That's 800-910-1370. Flexible, affordable, relevant. Call 800-910-1370. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 of pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, 
dollars, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-783-0810 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-783-0810. Again, that's 800-783-0810. Eighty-eight percent, eighty-eight percent. That that that's what my PC is on right now. Eighty-eight percent. It has now been going for an hour and thirty-seven minutes, and, and I've actually got higher speed internet than what I used to have. This is a massive download. What's it going to do when it hits a hundred percent? I'm still afraid, folks. I'm Alan Ray. It is a refreshingly non-political podcast about everything else, and I do this for free. Yes, I do. I wish I didn't. I wish I was getting paid millions and millions and millions of dollars for doing this because I ran across something in the Associated Press today that made me quite envious. Fairdale, New Dor- North Dakota. There's, st- there's really such a thing as a North Dakota? I know there's a South Dakota. I always thought this was a rumor. Uh, a property listing in northern North Dakota has an intriguing advertisement. The 50-acre property near Fairdale in Walsh County is listed as a unique opportunity to own a bit of Cold War history. The listing is a former top-secret defense missile site that will be auctioned in August. I need this property. More than 1,200 nuclear weapons were housed across eastern and central North Dakota during the Cold War. Millions of dollars were spent creating the um, uh, Minuteman missile sites in North Dakota. The Sprint missile could travel more than 7,600 miles an hour and was used to intercept missiles fired at the U.S. The Fairdale listing says the site features a command bunker and 14 Sprint missile launch tubes. It includes three parcels surrounded by dual fences that provide extra privacy, security, and protection when needed. KVLY TV reported. Piper's auctioneers will sell the compound on August 11th at the Ramada in Bismarck. An initial price, uh, bid price is not listed. There you go. There you go. You got an extra few million to spend? I- I'm going to start playing the lottery between now and then. I like every day. I need this. I need a bug out property in North Dakota, a, a missile defense site. Could you imagine how much fun you could have there? Could you imagine the parties you could throw in a bunker that used to be a Cold War missile defense site? Could you imagine my shows? Yeah, I, that's the first thing I'd do. The first thing I'd do. This is the way I think. I would set up this huge aerial tower. Get some satellite dishes out there, you know, where I can I can just tap into the, the best high-speed satellite I can out there. And I would just do shows every day. And then I could really honestly say, coming from a, a defense bunker in North Dakota, it's Alan Ray, live. You guys would love it. You'd suck it right up, wouldn't you? I know you. I know you. You're a bunch of freaks. There's no denying it. I want, I want a Cold War missile site. I don't know if, if my wife would agree to it, but I, I think it would be cool. I mean, just the bunker itself, but, I mean, you still have the Sprint missile launch tubes. You could shoot, like, confetti bombs out of them and stuff. And there's two fences, two fences surrounding it. Well, salespeople would leave you alone. I don't know. 50 acres, hunting, get a little lake on there, fishing. Sounds like bug out property to me, man. If, if, if the world is going to end, I would want to be in a nuclear missile bunker in North Dakota. End of story. And I would still 
bring you. I do this for free and the hardcore patriot. Oh, and by the way, my new show on Sunday nights, Circumspice. You need to check that out. It's all about Michigan, Michigan on the right. And it, it's not just politics. It's it's fishing reports, hunting reports, things that have to do with Michigan, things that we do that you don't. Reasons why you should be jealous of me because I live in the hand. Yes, I do. And I come from you, from, well, I can't really call this the cornfields of southeastern Michigan now because these boneheads went around and planted mostly beans this year. We still do have a couple of cornfields, but they're the rotating crops right now. And so there's beans. And it's kind of a cool thing because when you have, when you look out here and you've got beans, you can see farther. The corn gets really, really tall, super tall, like seven, eight feet tall. And after a while, you start feeling boxed in. I can sit out on my patio now, look all the way across past the railroad tracks, and look at the deer frolicking about and things like that. <sighs> but no, I, it's just another show. And if I if I won the lottery, all I got to do is, is, is just win the multi-million stupid lottery and retire so I can just do this stuff every day for you guys. You'd love that, right? All right, let's get preachy. You a gamer? I know you're a gamer. Some of you are gamers. Some of you in chat are gamers. Some of you that follow me are gamers. I wish Anthony was here because I would love to get his feedback on this. Esports expert urges gamers to ditch sugary drinks to level up. This is on channelnewsasia.com. Um... Fabian Breutsch is an experienced sports psychologist, but probably didn't need all his years of training to deduce that most gamers have poor posture and unhealthy relationships with sugary drinks. The former professional goalkeeper immersed himself in the world of gamers to observe their daily cycle of playing, eating, and sleeping before devising what he called a four-pillar strategy of sleep, nutrition, physical, and mental training. You hear me, gamers? You hear me? It's no longer acceptable to be... Couch potatoes, slugs. Uh, let's see. They didn't drink enough, and if they did, it was drinks with caffeine, which led to improper sleep. Breutsch, formerly a uh, Schalke 04 Esports, and now the head of performance at Excel Esports, told Reuters, I saw so many Cokes and energy drinks, they obviously have a short-term benefit, but lead to long-term issues to health, concentration, and tension. The guys also had really bad posture. They would play sports. We needed them to get more sunlight. There were... There were um, a lot of vitamin D deficiencies because they were always at the screen, which emits blue light and makes it harder to sleep. Excel's gamers are teenagers or in their early 20s and come from various countries on short-term contracts. Broich, 29, said that it was up to him to gain their trust as they were usually introverted types, <laughs> stressing the need to prevent them from overreacting to negative results or online reviews. Gamers are hating me right now. I could tell that most of them have probably thrown the phones or whatever they're listening to across the room and went, ah, you li Anthony, you listening? You, you should be listening to this, son. Hey, I'm going to get your feedback on the next I do this for free. I'm sure he's going to be over here in my face going, now, wait a minute. That's okay. Uh, they're really young individuals stopping high school and studies for one or two-year contracts, Broich said. For me, it's really important for them to trust me. I want to help them in ways possible. Overall, there's confidentiality, but what I sometimes do, if it feels like it's beneficial, if I ask if I can share information with coaches. I think certain feedback should be given to coaches so the process of improvement is not delayed. So basically, this guy went in there and noticed what we kind of all noticed for years that when you do nothing but games you end up with issues health issues because and trust me i'm not i'm not going to be judgy because you're talking to the guy who accidentally stayed up till like four o'clock in the morning one time playing guitar hero when it first came out and my youngest came down to use the bathroom and was watching me play i went go to bed son it's midnight he goes dad it's 4 30 in the morning i went oh well maybe dad needs to go to bed <laughs> I know how it is. You can get wrapped up. And the games nowadays are just out of this world. I don't game. Like I said, my, my, the last real game that I mastered that I really kicked butt on was, uh, was Sonic the Hedgehog. I hold my own on Guitar Hero. But the, even since Guitar Hero came out, I watch, I watch my kids play some of these games, and they're incredible. The graphics are off the charts. It's almost like getting lost in reality. 
from reality. It's crazy, but it's okay to do that. You still have to exercise, stay away from sugary drinks, eat a nutritious meal, take a little bit of time for yourself, get sunlight, get exercise, go outside, interact with other people. In the long run, your gaming will improve. How about that? I'm right. And that was your fatherly talk for I do this for free. Still can't get my mind off that Cold War missile compound. I need that. I need that. I can set up a gaming system out there. And, and every time you turn it on, just have that funky computer voice saying, would you like to play a game? <laughs> yes. Yes, I would. Let's play Nuclear Holocaust. Speaking of taking care of yourself, <laughs> dozing off. Is napping good or bad for heart health? Well, I don't know. Now that I'm back to normal, now that I'm, I'm back to working afternoons, now that my life seems to have somewhat of a routine and things are starting to look up, I, I, I get up. I usually in the morning, I have breakfast, listen to a couple or I listen to um, um, the Daily Dose with Rick Robinson and Stacey Lennox. It's on KLRN Radio, America's Podcast Network, starting at 7 a.m. It's a two-hour show. And I drink my coffee and have my breakfast in the morning. Then I go for a run or I lift weights. I'm back at it. I'm back running three miles. I'm going to try to juice that up again this weekend, start getting back to doing five to six miles on the weekend so I can hit the Kiwanis Trail that goes from Adrian, Michigan, to Tecumseh, Michigan, which is my favorite thing in the world to run. Um... I'm getting back into it. I'm feeling better, doing better. But you know what? Before I go to work, I like to have about a 20 to 30 minute nap. Now, I'm going to admit yesterday was a disaster. I did not sleep good the day before yesterday. It was horrible. In fact, you know, I yeah, I'm a fitness nut. I wear a Fitbit. My Fitbit even shows that I was just up and down and up and down all night. Woke up feeling like I was dragging. I... Uh, headache, you know those headaches you get when you don't sleep good, your eyes just feel like they're burning and everything. Tried to go to work, mm, nope, called in, blew it off. Went to bed early last night, slept almost eight straight hours. I was tired. Even so, got a good night's sleep. I like to have a little 20 to 30 minute nap before I go to work because I work 3 o'clock to 11.30 at night's. And I just happened to catch this. It's by the American Heart Association, which, you know, that's, that's some good news right there. That's, that's the kind of stuff I want you to learn on this show. Um, under the right conditions and for the right reasons, taking an afternoon nap is probably a good idea. If you're aware to the possible pitfalls. A power nap between 15 and 45 minutes can improve memory and reduce fatigue for the rest of the day, said uh, Dr. Michael Grandner, director of the Sleep and Health Research Program at the University of Arizona in Tucson. If you're otherwise well-rested, that kind of nap can actually boost performance pretty well. I'm down with this, okay? Uh, some studies even compare the benefit of a midday nap to a cup of coffee, while some companies, including Google and NASA, let workers pencil nap times into their daily schedules. But the long-term effects of naps are less conclusive. For example, a 2019 study in the British Medical Journal Heart Track, uh, uh, British Medical Journal Heart, tracked the napping habits of nearly 3,500 people over five years and found those who napped once or twice a week were 48% less likely to have a cardiovascular event than those who didn't. Conversely, a meta-analysis of 11 studies published in the Journal of Sleep in 2015 showed people who napped for an hour or more a day had almost two times the rate of cardiovascular disease than people who didn't nap. So there, just like anything else, there's a zone. We do not know enough about the association of naps with either optimal health or disease risk, especially cardiovascular disease, which, folks, cardiovascular disease is the biggest killer on the planet. Okay? Look at your stats. Everybody's freaked out over COVID-19. Everybody's scared of this, this virus. That's fine. Respect it. It's real. 
in your spare time while you're sitting around being locked down, bring up health risks of heart diseases. Heart diseases is hands down the number one killer in the world, in the country, in your state, more so than COVID-19. And nobody does a thing about it. We should be we should be out there preaching right now, you know. Get out there, take off your masks and go for a good three mile run or a three mile walk. Out in the country somewhere where you don't have to have it on. That's what I do. I'm going to get off my soapbox. If you're napping because it helps you get through the day, that's probably a good thing, Grad, Dr. Grander said. But if you're napping because you just can't stay awake, that's a sign that there's some underlying health issue. You're either not getting enough sleep at night or your sleep quality could be very poor, which is what it usually is for a lot of people. And I can tell you one of the reasons why it is for a lot of people is because a lot of people live their lives like this. They get up in the morning. They go to work, they come home, they slap something on a plate that is microwaved or barely even made, barely even cooked, or, you know, they might cook a decent dinner, and then they go sit down in front of the TV and they watch TV until they go to bed. No physical activity, no mental stimulation, nothing to wear you out so you do sleep well at night. And trust me, it's really, really easy to fall into this routine. Here's the thing, you know, and and let's, let's step back to this COVID-19 thing a little bit. I experienced this myself and it was curious. So I started asking around, okay, I've, I have friends in the circle of psychology. They're psychologists more so than I am. I I also have friends in the medical field and I, I started asking around, do you find people are exercising more or less because they're locked down? Because when, you know, I got two weeks off, I got two weeks and I thought that, Oh man, this is going to be great. I'm going to do this and this and this and this and this and this and this. It turns out now I have not seen any studies on this and I would like to, I'm anxious. I might do some research. It turns out that being locked down had the opposite effect. I basically gave up on a lot of stuff. I ate too much. I did other things too much. The only thing I managed to get better at while I was inside for two weeks locked down was I played my guitar every day. I recorded. I made some really cool songs. There's, and then I would like to know, I would like for the input of a professional psychologist, these people who have been locked in their houses for months now, who have been you know, on leave from work. Does it affect them the same way? Or is it an individual thing? Because I just keep hearing this story more and more and more that, you know, well, some people take advantage of it. They rebuild their house. They do this, they do that. But a lot of the overwhelming majority of people have just folded and have taken to their couch and are binge-watching TV, gaining weight, doing horrible things to their body. That concerns me because, let's face it, cardiovascular health, heart diseases, heart problems and complications is the biggest killer in the world. Hands down, do the research yourself. Back to the nap thing, though. You'd... The the problem is, and and let's let's look at this for a bit here. Um, The Center for Disease Control Prevention estimates one third of U.S. adults don't get enough sleep. One third. I think that number is low. I think it's more like over half. At least seven hours per night is the standard recommendation, and warns that the risks include heart disease, diabetes, obesity, and depression. Even the weary who appear to have slept long enough may have sleep apnea, a common sleep disorder where breathing is frequently interrupted. Sleep is vitally important, folks. I've actually done psychological studies. I, uh, one of my classes when I went back to college was uh, basically on brain health, heart health, and the lack of sleep is one of the worst things in the world for you. In fact, after I got out of this class, after I did this 25-page study on sleep and blah, 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 
I made it a point to start trying to sleep seven hours every night. Does it happen every night? No. In fact, it hasn't been happening for some reason. Uh, and, and, you know, who knows how accurate this Fitbit thing is. It, it usually shows six and a half, sometimes seven hours of sleep. But, but I do attempt to stay in bed and sleep seven hours a night as a rule. I, I hit the sack about 1230 and I get up at 730. So there's an effort being made. Whether it happens or not, well, that's, to be, uh, that's to be debated. Uh, if an individual has significant daytime sleepiness leading to inadvertent or spontaneous naps, it's usually indicative of um, the sleep quantity issues or quality issues. If the sleep some um, time is adequate, he urges an evaluation for sleep disorders or medical diseases. So, there, you know, if you, if you wake up as tired as you go to bed, you may have other problems. Uh, now, that being said, let's look at the ideal nap. Here's the ideal nap. Napping too long. See, what, what, what he says is you don't want to get into a deep stage of sleep. If you've ever woke up from a nap that was too long, you know it because you feel miserable and groggy. I did that yesterday because I didn't sleep the night before. I took about a 50-minute nap and I woke up. I didn't know what planet I was on. I didn't know what day it was. It could have been 80 years in the future for all I knew. If you wake up like that, well, you got a problem. And I had a problem. I didn't sleep good the night before. But it says you don't want to get into a deep day, just, uh, stage of sleep. Napping too long during the day can uh, disrupt overall sleep patterns. It's generally recommended to maximize sleep at night. In other words, your, your ideal nap, and it's great that we're talking about this on this show. It makes me laugh. Your ideal nap is somewhere around 15 to 45 minutes. Now, I know a lot of people get mad at me because literally I can close my eyes and be asleep in just a few minutes. I don't really sleep soundly, but I can take a 15, 20 minute nap, wake up and I'm good for the rest of the afternoon. Um, and I don't know if this is healthy or not, probably not, but my pattern right now is I'll eat lunch, um, eh, about 1230 and at one o'clock I'm done eating lunch. I kick back. I sleep until one thirty, I get up, get ready, go to work. On the way through into work, I stop by my Tim Hortons, get my cup of coffee, and I'm good to go till I get home. And I usually hit the house about 15 minutes after midnight. I'm good to go. Sleep is very important. It really is. Um, and if you walk away with anything else in this show, you need to make an effort. Promise me you'll make an effort to put more effort into taking you know, 15, 20 minute afternoon nap. But if you are just coming home, eating dinner and not exercising, just plopping in front of the TV until midnight, going to sleep, getting back up at six o'clock in the morning, not getting adequate sleep, enough sleep and thinking you're going to get through life without really getting your butt kicked. You're thinking wrong. Make the extra effort. Ah, we're almost back to the top of the hour, and I want to leave you with this. And I don't know if any of you caught this here a while back, but the USS Bono Richard has extensive structural, electrical, and mechanical damage from a fire last week. Um, now, I caught wind of this a little bit, but the U.S. Navy uh, is going to make a full public report on this. And they sent, um, what's his name, Chief Naval Operations Admiral Mike, Gil, or Admiral Mike Gilday um, out there to look at this ship. It caught on fire. He says, we need to go through this, catalog it all, and get an understanding of whether or not we had it right. He says, and if not, how do we quickly adjust across the fleet to make sure that this doesn't happen again? Uh, apparently, a spark set a bunch of boxes and stuff, you know, uh, personal um, supplies and things like that for the, for the Navy personnel that were getting ready to, to bug out on this ship, set it on fire. That fire expanded and it ended up costing millions and millions of dollars. Uh, the Bono, the Bono Richard was nearing the end of a two year upgrade estimated to cost $250 million. And a lot of that went to waste because of this fire. This fire burned for like four days. They had a heck of a time trying to get it contained. Um, it's it's crazy. It's sad. And we need to keep the people, you know, and let's face it, this is our money. <laughs> so your tax dollars. But um, they're going to go through this thing, and they're going to make sure that it doesn't happen to any other ships. Something went wrong, and when it went wrong, 
the Navy jumped on it and said, let's make sure it didn't happen again. Now, the last time a big thing like this happened was in the 60s. I can't remember the name of the ship, but it caught on fire. There's a deck fire, and it almost destroyed the entire ship. As a result of that, from what I understand, no, I didn't. I wasn't in the Navy. I wasn't in the service at all. But from what I understand, when you go through naval, naval basic training, everybody learns to be a firefighter. That's just the way it goes. Going to leave you with that. I'm Alan Ray. I do this for free. It's a refreshingly non-political podcast, but everything else. Join me in two weeks. Stay tuned. Juxtaposition is coming up next on KLRN Radio, America's podcast network, Politics Free Friday Night. We'll speak again soon.